Hello everyone, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to another edition of the Superman and Lois Season 1 Review Series. And today I am going to be talking about Episode 7, Man of Steel, which I have just finished watching. And this episode was absolutely fantastic. Lots of cool twists, a big shocking reveal. This episode had it all and then some, and this also marks the directorial debut of David Ramsey, better known as John Diggle from Arrow, and I thought David Ramsey did an excellent job in directing this episode, and as I mentioned, this was just absolutely brilliant, and we are only now seven episodes into season one, and I'm loving it every second of it and every episode that i've seen there hasn't been a single bad one each episode is just getting better and better and the big twist in this episode we learned the true identity of captain luther now for those of you who have been watching the show captain luther is from another earth where he works very closely with general sam lane and on his earth all of his men and General Sam Lane and basically the entire world was destroyed by their Superman all dressed in black. But in this episode, we learned another reason why Captain Luther hates Superman so much, which I will get into in a moment. And in a way, it kind of makes sense when you think about it. But there is also another twist. We learned the true identity of Captain Luther. He is not Luther at all. We learned that his real name is John Henry Irons, better known as Steel. And for those of you who are very familiar with that name, John Henry Irons, aka Steel, made his debut in DC Comics The Adventures of Superman, issue 500 in June 1993. And for those of you who have read the stories of the return of Superman, Steel was a big part of that story arc where there were four guys claiming to be Superman. So you had Cyborg Superman, you had the Eradicator, you had Connor Kent, aka Superboy, and you had John Henry Irons, aka Steel. So you had those four guys claiming to be Superman after Superman was brutally murdered at the hands of Doomsday. So for Steel to make his Arrowverse debut in Superman and Lois was a big, big moment because there was no indication that we were going to see Steel in the Arrowverse. So to have Captain Luther now be revealed as John Henry Irons was a huge moment and one that I definitely did not see coming at all. And also in this episode, the reason why Captain Luther, now known as John Henry Irons, hates Superman so much is he murdered Lois Lane on their Earth, on national TV, live with his heat vision. So, whew, big stuff. Big, big stuff. But... As I said, this episode was just absolutely fantastic and I loved every second of it. So now it's going to be very interesting to see where Superman and John Henry Irons go from here. Because we all know, anybody who's watched the animated series, who's read the comic books, we know that Superman and Steel become good friends and close allies. So I'm wondering whether or not we're going to see that relationship forged. Or will they be sworn enemies? But time will tell, really. But I, I absolutely love this episode. So this episode pretty much picks up where we left off at the end of episode six. We saw Jordan collapse and have terrible headaches. And we see Clark just carry his son and just speed off to the fortress. And this pretty much picks up where we left off. And we now learn that... Morgan Edge has put together this leadership program where he's recruiting people for a quote-unquote job, but it actually turns out to be that he's using them as test subjects through this Kryptonite X and trying to give these people superpowers. So lots of big twists, lots of big moments, shocking reveals. This episode had it all, and for me, this was one of the best episodes of the show so far. I mean, I've enjoyed every single one, but I think this one, I would put this episode high up there with the first one, the season premiere, the pilots. 
It's just absolutely fantastic. So with that all said, let's get right into it. Let's talk about episode seven, Man of Steel. So we see Superman arrives at the fortress cradling Jordan and the jor hologram confirms that the issue is Jordan's super hearing is now kicking in. The hologram explains that there's no magic fix, although it will take a lot of practice and he may suffer some pain and discomfort until he's learned to master his hearing better. We then see at the back of the Kent farm, Jordan is sitting in front of the fire, listening to noise cancelling headphones. Clark says that he will help Jordan, but that the boys need to get to bed and then consoles a very frustrated Lois, who is still in the dark about this mysterious stranger. As for Cushing House, Lana calls Lois to ask what she should do for watching out for Edge and asks whether there's a way to know that someone has superpowers. Lois says no, but cautions her to be careful since others likely do. As the Kent breakfast table, we see Clark joins Lois, who has a huge fire on the real Marcus Bridgewater, who has been dead for over six years, and that this person who claims to be Marcus Bridgewater isn't really who he says he is. Now, this was actually pretty good because we all know that Lois is like a dog who just won't let up. And we got to see Lois at her investigative best once again. And this time Clark was along for the ride. So that was quite a good moment to see uh, Lois and Clark working together, you know, seeing that classic relationship that we all know and love for so many years. Clark tells Lois that they should tell the boys what's going on with the edge situation. Lois doesn't want to just yet, saying they need more information, and she says that she's going to leave to confront this mysterious Bridgewater. At Edge's company, he's berating Leslie Law, who we have seen has had superpowers in a few episodes now, is falling, failing to get anything on the man who was with Lois at the mines. She leaves, and he meets up with Lana Lang, asking her to start creating a leadership program for employees, not realising that this is actually for guinea pigs to give them superpowers. At home, Clark coaches Jordan on how to focus on one sound and tune everything else out. Now, this was kind of a nice scene because seeing Clark teaching his son how to master his senses and hearing was very similar to how the Kents were helping Clark when he was that age. So it was kind of nice to see a role reversal. So now we're seeing Clark as the mentor guiding his son just like Jonathan and Martha were for him when he was that age so that was kind of a nice scene. He quickly gets overwhelmed and wants to quit putting the noise cancelling headphones back on. In his RV Captain Luffy is working with his AI trying to repair it when Lois knocks. He takes a gun to the door with him and she tells him that she wants to meet with him in a public place in an hour and if that he doesn't tell the truth they will not be working together anymore. I wonder how Lois will re will react when she learns that on Captain Luther's Earth she was actually married to him. I bet she'd be quite surprised. We then see Luther thinks about his Earth where he wakes up to his Lois and the two start kissing only to be caught by their daughter. Their little family debate is interrupted where we see an army of Kryptonians led by an evil Superman dressed in black is destroying the city. I got absolute chills seeing this. You know, seeing evil Superman dressed in black leading an army of Kryptonians, it, it just brought back good memories of the comic books where, you know, where Superman went rogue and just basically just tried to take over the world. And even the Superman, the animated series where he was working with Darkseid, you know, just seeing all those evil Superman stories flash back towards me was just unbelievable. And I, I love those stories and seeing that in a flashback was just cool. With Clark Kent, gone. Jordan again tries to focus on his hearing, this time on Sarah Cushing. He tunes in on the second half of the conversation between Sarah and Jonathan. While the actual conversation is innocent enough, the small snippets John Jordan hears makes it sound like Jonathan is actually trying on with Sarah. Oh boy. Jonathan, meanwhile, isn't happy about having to constantly make excuses for his brother Jordan or about the fact that Sarah immediately jumps on the Jordan conspiracies theories rather than just asking about his broken cast. Lois goes into the dinner with Captain Luther where he's reluctant to give her any information while Clark heads to the RV to look for evidence. He is greeted at the door by the AI who addresses him as Captain Luther, which obviously sets off huge alarm bells. Lois gets a phone call from Chrissy tipping her off that Edge is about to send out a small shipment of kryptonite. Luther tells her that he needs to talk to Superman urgently, but she tells him not until she knows who he really is. 
As the RV, the AI shows Captain Luther a photo of Clark trespassing, but Luther isn't interested. He's more interested in a satellite surveillance showing activity at the mines. As the Edge office, one of Lana's old friends from Smallville comes in to apply for the Young Executive Program. She is reluctant since she knows Edge is actually dangerous, but tells her friend she will try to help. And Edge catches a glimpse of the exchange. In the car, Clark and Lois speculate whether the stranger could be related to Lex Luthor. They're following the trucks carrying some of Edge's ex-Kryptonite stash and the security detail using Clark's telepathic um, vision to keep their distance but he has to go rescue the security detail and drop them in the middle of the desert when he sees that they're about to come into conflict with a gun-toting Captain Luther. They immediately call out to Leslie Lara whose idea it was to try and send out Kryptonite X to see who would draw it out. Lois and Clark confront Captain Luther who steals a lead line case of Kryptonite X. At school, Jonathan meets a pretty girl and awkwardly flirts with her a bit. Sarah reassures her that sh him that she's out of his league. Back on the road, Captain Luther tells Lois that he needs her to introduce him to Superman because it's the only way to stop this. Lois says she'll set up the meeting if he surrenders the Kryptonite X. And then in a flashback to his Earth, we see Lois is on TV live to tell the world about the existence of Kryptonite and she is murdered by an evil Superman with his heat vision. Ow! I was definitely getting some Injustice vibes from that moment. Very, very dark, but very, very awesome at the same time. Outside the Smallville Gazette, Lois asks Clark to bring the box from the Kryptonite X to the Department of Defense to get fingerprinted and leaves to connect with Chrissy. Clark leaves and Captain Luther heads back to his lair to assemble something to attack Superman. This is intercuts with a series of shots of the stranger and his niece assembling the suit of armor he used when he first confronted Superman. When John gets home, Jordan confronts him about chatting with Sarah, but when the argument starts getting loud, he collapses to the floor as his hearing starts to give him headaches again. At Edge's company, Lana has four of her five candidates selected. He wants to know whether there's something she isn't telling him and suggests he could put Kyle into the program if he wanted. He tells her that he looks forward to hearing her decision. At the Gazette, Chrissy reports that there's no chance for strangers related to Luther. In fact, there's no record of him whatsoever. Getting good now. We then see Superman goes to a warehouse to meet him and the stranger tells him they need to stop something that's coming. When Superman asks whether he thinks Edge is the big threat, he says no and then tells him that in Kryptonese that I know you're Kal-El. Meanwhile, Lois gets a call from the DOD. The prints have come back and that the stranger is actually someone who has been dead for six years, not Luther, but John Henry Irons. Now, that's the big reveal I'm talking about. I absolutely geeked out to this moment because this was something I wasn't expecting to see. He tells Superman he's the Man of Steel, summoning a giant hammer to hit and starts hitting Superman with it. Yeah, I definitely got steel vibes from this. Just the fact that he confirmed that he was John Henry Irons and then using the giant hammer to beat Superman up. Big moment and a big, big reveal. Absolutely loved it. He explains that the hammer feeds on kinetic energy so that the further it travels, the harder it hits. Leslie Lara, hearing what's going on with her superhuman, calls Edge and tells him to move a larger shipment of Kryptonite eggs while Superman is distracted. As Lois drives towards Clark, calling to try and tell him that she thinks her source is the stranger. Meanwhile, Jordan's superhero picks up the attack on Superman and the boys get in the truck and start driving towards him. Just as Irons is about to deliver the devastating blow to Superman with the kinetic hammer, the boys drive the truck into the lair and run Irons over. John takes the hammer and smashes out the red lights, giving Superman a second wind and a chance to take Irons into custody. At the DOD, Superman tells the soldiers on hand that he and General Lane will interrogate Irons in the morning and no one is to try it before then. At the Cushion House, Lana's friend comes in to report she got the job and that Edge had called her himself. She brings Lana a basket telling her Edge told her she got the job after he saw with Lana. Hmm. Back at Edge's company, he has a whiteboard together that suggests that Lana has unwittingly chosen guinea pigs for his Kryptonite X experiments. Oh no, this ain't going to be good. Back at the Kent's farm, Lois tells Clark that she still has a bad feeling about Irons and Clark says that he plans on getting more information in the morning. The pair agree to tell the boys everything. 
In one final flashback to John Henry's Earth, John and Lois's daughter Natasha is worried that the suit isn't ready, but John says they know where Superman is, and this is his one chance to end it all. He tells her that he's going to go out there and find Superman and kill him, and then he'll be right back. The two share a tearful hug, and Nat puts one of her hair ties around his wrist. He promises her that one more time that he'll be right back and leaves their basement for what seems likely to be the last time that he would ever see his daughter. And then we cut back to see John Henry Irons on our earth, sitting in his cell, stroking their hair tie, and tearfully looks at it as we slowly end this episode. And that pretty much wraps up episode seven and my review. Overall, absolutely love this episode. And as I mentioned at the beginning, David Ramsey did an excellent job directing this episode. And quite frankly, I like to see him direct some more episodes. He did an excellent job. And the big reveal that Captain Luther is really John Henry Irons, a.k.a. Still, was the best twist I've seen in an Arrowverse show in a long time. And it was something I didn't see coming. I just absolutely loved it. And I'm really looking forward to seeing episode eight and what's going to happen next and so far as i've mentioned time and time again superman and lois so far for me has been the best show in the arrowverse and it's just getting better and we're only seven episodes into the show already can't wait for the next one so that's going to be it from me i'm going to wrap this up now what did you think of episode seven did you enjoy it what do you think of david ramsey's directorial debut do you think he did a good job? Would you like to see him direct some more episodes for the show? What did you think of the big twist and reveal that Captain Luther is really John Henry Irons, a.k.a. Still? Did you think that was a good twist? Did you see that coming or did you not see that coming at all? And also, what about Superman killing Lois on Irons Earth? Did you see that coming? Do you think that was a big shocking moment? And also, what about these guinea pigs that Morgan Edge is putting together. Do you think he'll be successful in creating his own army? And if so, what are his end games and what's his plans? You know what to do, guys. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your thoughts and comments down below, and I will see all of you next time for another edition of the Superman and Lois Season 1 review series, where I'll be talking about Episode 8, which I am very much looking forward to talking about, and I can't wait to see it and talk about it. So until next time, take care, everybody, and stay safe. And once again, thanks for listening.